Time for the second rebuilding job to start from this FM22 story. We're still in Scandinavia, but we've popped over to Denmark. We're back in the second tier. Now let's play our first game with Viborg. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome to what is, I guess, officially part one of this second rebuilding save from Viborg with me, Daniel. We are back today for our first game in charge at our new club. We've got to reflect on a bit of transfer work in our two and a half, three weeks in charge. And we've also got to play against the club we rejected to come and join Viborg FF. We have the daunting task of trying to win the league this season against the board expectations, despite the media not expecting us to be favourites for the league. So if you're looking forward to finding out what on earth's going on and what's happened since we joined the club in the last episode of this save, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video and subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. If you missed the last one where we were unemployed and looking for this job, we took the job amid a host of other offers. We met the squad, we met the staff and saw our first day at the club if you missed that it's up in the eye above now as is the original rebuilding save with Helsingborg there's also links to the twitch channel football podcast and merchandise store too and you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below and check out all the other playlists across the channel but let's get going because this is a bigger game than it looks on paper firstly after a little bit of a rebuild of the squad this summer some incredibly difficult decisions we face the side that offered us a job in this league first. The side that technically lost us our job at Helsingborg by not being able to afford our compensation. And they've gone for Lars Fries as manager, who will be looking to get one over on us today. But there is a lot to get through before we head into that game. Because when you joined me in the last episode, as we took this job whilst unemployed... We met a pretty awful financial situation which has remained. The club was spending significantly over its wage budget. It had a skeleton staffing team left. The dynamics weren't 100% great. And we had a few voids in the squad. Now, I thought they were problems in themselves. My word, I've met more since. Firstly, we can't offer long-term contracts to anyone because of the financial situation. So we're only actually able to offer six-month extensions. That's a problem. There's no long-term planning able to go on here. We've had to sell before we can buy. We've had to make big decisions, tough decisions, and try and buy on a budget. And for that, we've had to bide our time a little bit, which has been problematic. So let's start with the staffing changes at the club, because those have played a key part in the playing changes that have followed. So, following us joining the club, we have had four new staff members come in, three in very key roles, and one leave the club. That's because they were bought out by somebody else and we couldn't turn down the six or seven grand compensation for a person who wasn't particularly great at his job, if we're being honest. What I am really pleased about, though, given the frustration and the tension that's been through a lot of this summer, is just how good a staffing group we've got in. Now, going back to our long-term one club story with Hemel Hempstead, going back to Bangor City last year in our Builder Nation, you know how much emphasis I place on this. It can be even more important than getting the right players. Having the right staff makes a big difference. So let's look at the ones that came in. All of them were highlighted in that first meeting when we joined the club. I think we saw some of these on camera last time. Fleming Pedersen is the assistant manager. Let's start with him. Really solid attributes across the board. Experience, great judgment, has managed a top flight side, so has got real experience of what to expect. Has been involved in English football with Brentford, so can communicate well. And he's got a good reputation. I could not ask for a better right-hand man. Fleming Pedersen is going to be so important for me personally at this club. He's joined in the first team coaching ranks by Jacob Niestrup. He is a first team coach at the other end of his coaching career. 35 years of age, has had a year at Copenhagen and has been involved in their youth teams prior to that. He's a good coach, he's promising, he's still got a few holes in his development, but he's someone that we're really looking forward to working with. Got no reputation, but again, a very low wage and someone who I believe will be able to push us on to the next level tactically. But he's joined by a new head of youth development who is very good. Klaus Andersen is 49 years of age, right in the middle of the two. Very good coach as well, good personality, just a really good staff member across the board. And now here we've been able to get on a two-year deal, which is unlike all the players that come in. And I just think we've got someone really special there. For the level that we're at, for the budget we've got, 
I can't complain at getting someone of that standard. And given what's happening in the first team financially and all of the other stuff that goes with it, I think relying on youth development might be crucial later down the line. So Klaus Anderson could be the most important man at the club. Now in recent days, they have been joined by Martin Christensen as a B-team assistant manager. He's okay, but it's not really something we're that worried about. What we are worried about is the playing transfers. Now, there's a lot on the transfer screen and you might think, well, none of that's too surprising. But there's more than what meets the eye on this page. So you're going to have to bear with me for a while here. It looks like a simple case of two out and three in since I've been here. We've had to take a couple of decisions because both of the players that left would have been in the first team squad. One of them had pre-agreed to leave in January. But what we had was a situation where without letting Jose Angel go now, we wouldn't be able to bring anyone in because we were two grand above the wage bill. He was on 2100 a week. So I got them to take the highest deal they possibly would. We had to work down from about 100 grand. We got to 30. They took him on. We just had to accept it and take the loss on that one. But he would have been going for free anyway. All it means is today we haven't got a senior left back fit. So there are going to be some short term problems on that. Lucas Ornberg was the other one to go. He was out of contract at the end of the year and like so many others had been offered contracts. Most of them I'm just going to keep until January because we can't replace them. But Ornberg was a backup. We got four grand. He was on about 700 quid a week for a backup player. And I just thought, right, we can get someone better for this or someone in a position we need more desperately. So he's gone on as well. 21, shame to lose him, but hopefully he has a good career. The three that are in so far are all important signatures because the three positions we needed desperately. Goalkeeper, left back, striker. The left back, not so much a senior player and is already injured, but three signings I'm pretty happy with nonetheless. So firstly, the scouts have raided Copenhagen for Johan Guadagno from Copenhagen. What a goalkeeper, 20 years of age. Maybe not quite as good as we would have hoped to get. And there was actually another director of football offer for a keeper who was slightly better. Didn't have the same key attributes technically, but was better across the board. However, he wanted a transfer fee and bigger wages, which I can't justify at this stage. My hope is that this lad from first team football will develop really quickly. He'll be able to play in a team that doesn't face too much pressure in some games and hopefully be able to push on and be a really good keeper because he's got a good personality and all the key stats just need to get that mental side of the game up. So he's going to be first choice for now unless we can get anyone in. He's someone I'm looking forward to working with. Fingers crossed. He'll be able to do a job, but regardless, he's much better than what we had here before. The second one is Vimoj Mungu. He is a left back who was available as a free. He's only 18 and he's going to be a backup. One and a half star ability, five star potential on £110 a week. Great personality, good key attributes. Maybe not the best going forward, but a solid fullback. And given the fact that we didn't really have any money at the time to get in a youth international who's been playing in PSG's youth team, I don't think we can argue. So he's going to be a backup for the season. Hopefully he can stay fitter than he has in pre-season. And then yesterday came the big one. A man we've had on trial for two weeks but just couldn't get over the line. You all know how it is when you bring in trialists. You have to wait until their wage demands start to drop. Thankfully, they eventually did. Now, the issue with this signing is that we've played the whole of pre-season strikerless virtually because we didn't think we were going to have a striker. Now, we've got Joe Chim Rothman. And we've got to change that plan because he is a three-star ability left winger and striker. He's a good finisher. He's just a very solid player in behind. And again, young with a good personality. What I'm hoping we can do here is just try and push these guys on, extend their contract six months and then sell them the next window. Because I think the truth of the matter is we've got to repair this financial situation with players because I don't see any other way it happens. The cup competitions, you don't get a huge amount of prize money. The league TV deal isn't massive. So this is going to be a real job for me on the pitch to not just rebuild the team and lead them to promotion, but rebuild the football club and financial stability with it. The slight issue I've got with this guy is he played 30 games for Norgeland and 28 on loan in this tier in the first season. And he's only scored five goals in those 59 appearances, which doesn't bode hugely well. But I've got a feeling in the right tactic, with the right players around him, I can maybe do what we did with Van den Herk at Helsingborg and make him a proper goal scorer. Big potential, good player, and likes to get in behind. My type of striker at 23. But that isn't half the story. 
we've got to go to the transfer centre because we're about to lose a very big player permanently, but not immediately. Let's have a look at what I mean. So if we have a look firstly at the players going out, two key players on this list both agreed to leave. Firstly, Benjamin Karamoko, you may have noticed, had offers for him when we joined the club. He was out of contract at the end of December, but wouldn't discuss a new deal because he'd only just signed one, because they were signing them every six months. So it means that he has left the club to go to AJ Oxair from the 1st of January, pre-agreed. That means we've got him for the first half of the season, and it's a good job, because he's our best centre-half by away. But 1.9 grand a week will come off the wage bill, and then maybe we can bring someone else in instead. But... Another player at 28 who long term maybe wouldn't have been at this club but would have been crucial for what we do now. More importantly though, Ibrahim Saeed. He threw his toys out the pram because we were getting offers. I said I'm not selling you for less than 350 grand. And not only have we managed to get that from various clubs as you can see, we've also been fortunate enough and clever enough to work in a loan back for a season. So Ibrahim Saeed on the 1st of next month will go for £350,000 to Christiansen. So he will be with us for the rest of the year, continue his good start to his career. But he's another one of those with massive potential in the future. I'm afraid we've lost very early doors. So two outs that are going to be problematic, but two ins that may be very useful to the squad. The first one is the desperately needed first choice left back. He's the other one we had on trial with Rothman the striker. Took a little bit longer to reduce his wage demands. But if we can get him 32 year old Jesper Laridson, 1.2 grand a week, very solid left back. Of course we lost Jose Angel selling him off early and this is the guy I've got as a replacement. The good news here is I don't have to worry about the age of signings because we can only offer one year deals as a maximum and most of them are six month deals so if we can bring him in and he declines then we just get rid of him again. But very solid, very versatile, the type of player we need and a good set piece taker which will be crucial at this stage too. The second one is the second part of our raid of Copenhagen. A centre midfielder, Daniel Harbo, at 20 years of age. I'm conscious of the fact a couple of our midfielders are out of contract in December. And halfway through the season, I don't want too much instability. So this guy was available for about 350 quid a week in wages. And he's very solid. So he will join the club too. It means at the moment, we're very threadbare. Next week, we'll have two more added in. But let's have a look at what squad that leaves us with. It's this. A few youngsters, a very weak bench, and not even a full bench at the moment, but two good players to come in, a good first 11 and a good first 12 or 13. It's just about who we can keep fit. I did try and sell Felix Mikau because he was on the bench and look, he's the second highest paid player. He's not that good, but he wouldn't agree to go. No one wanted to put the offer in. No one wanted to take the contractual terms and he didn't want to force his way out. So he stays for now as well. The rest of the lineup, though, is really good. Bar Rothman up front, it's all three and a half star ability plus. Ignore the fact we've got a centre midfielder playing left back. And actually think we've got a pretty good team. It's just whether we can protect the goalkeeper and whether the striker can get enough goals. But we said it last time out, the spine is very good. So let's have a look at where we're expected to finish after those sign-ins. Don't forget, we're expected to win the league by our board. We're expected to finish fourth by the media, but it's tightened up ever so slightly. So I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to make a real big impression. We come up against the side we rejected in the first game. Now let's see how we get on against them and what team we've picked for our first match of the season. I've decided to start our time here at Viborg as I did with Helsingborg and as I do in most saves in my careers. Just by being that little bit more cautious, we're going to start with the balance mentality and a slightly more defensive version of the tactic. However, I have got the strikerless version working and I have also got the 4-2-3-1 going. But for now, this is the one we're going for. I feel it gives us a solid base and while we're waiting for one or two to come in, we do still need to protect certain positions. We've only got six subs because those other two signings not across the line, but our 11 is really very strong. So we've got Guadagno, the new loan signing in goal, with Anyembi and Bonde, the centre midfielder at left back. He is thankfully actually pretty good in that position and has played there before for this club. So not quite as alarming as it might have been, but we've lost a little physicality and attacking threat there. We've lost a bit out of midfield too. Karamoko, the man who's leaving alongside Carlson as centre half, both ball playing defenders. I was tempted to change Karamoko, but he's okay on the ball at this level. Gronin is alongside Janusa and Lonvik, 
He'll be that centre midfielder on attacking midfield. I'm really hopeful that he can do something special for us because he looks like a proper attacking star. And then Saeed, the man on his way out, and then back on loan on the right wing with Beck inside winger off the left and Rothman first appearance up front. I've actually got those two swapping positions regularly so they can get involved in each other's space and cause a little confusion to defences. But otherwise, it's a fairly basic tactic. We'll build around it as we need to. But our first game against the club we rejected to come here. We need to try and avoid ending up with a dose of humble pie here. And here we go, our first competitive game in charge of Viborg. It is a big game for this football club. I'm just seeing if they've kept all of their stars as well, because there was a centre half that we remember looking quite good, and I don't see him in that line up there. The rest of it pretty similar though, so let's see how we get on. We're going to ask the lads to get in there and win it. We might go positive if there's no early signs, but let's try and get on the front foot. Nil-nil, one minute gone. Please let it be a positive start. We've got a corner with Carlson on the right-hand side into Karamoko. Hedge just over. He's on his way out. He's got half a season to show us how good he is. Unfortunately, that one misses the target, though. It remains goalless, but it looks like we've got the early running. Not a big fan of the camera angles there, I've got to be honest, but Carlson picks it up in the middle, finds Lonvik. Through ball towards Rothman, just over hit. Unfortunately, he won't get on the end of that. Carlson gets it, finds Karamoko. Got support on the left and also space to just run into. Finds Janusa. Out to Beck on the left-hand side. The star out of the academy in recent years. Through ball to Lonvik. That is exactly the sort of combination we were looking for. Centre midfielder on attack, getting in behind. Even when he's been playing as the shadow striker, he's done that. And then Beck off the let, cutting in. He's got a great passing range. He loves to look for the through ball. And he's produced a brilliant one there. Positive start, brilliant 20 minutes. And we're 1-0 up. We've got something to show for it. As we approach the half an hour mark with the ball on the right hand side from an advanced throw in. He's worked his way out to Lonvik who goes back to Carlson. The centre half is completely unmarked back there. No players left forward by the visitors. But they win the ball back and almost get away as Yanusa finds Karamoko. Great ball to Lonvik again. Just wide of the post. I know we've bought in a striker and I know we've got two very good wingers. I'm going to call it now. I think Lonvik will be our top scorer this year. Because he just looks like he's got so much freedom and so much quality. And at the moment, we're unlucky it's only one as Colson puts the ball in. We don't want to read too much into it because we're playing a bottom half side at home. But we're looking good as Yanusa's has got it on the right. Takes on his man. Through ball to Saeed. Two in the middle. Rothman's one. Beck the other. Great block by the defender. Beck again. Chance to cut it back. Gives the ball away to Boateng. It was another chance. Are we going to regret missing all these? It's 1-0 at half time. It's been a fabulous performance, but we haven't got the goals the performance deserves. So let's tell the lads to keep going, look for the next gear. I just need to get Rothman off the mark or just have a moment of magic from midfield. And we're back with a goal kick for Jonsson. Long downfield for our visitors today. One by Gronin in the anchor roll though, and he gives it to Anyembi at right back. Finds Carlson. Starts again with his goalkeeper, who's barely had a touch on his debut here. Puts a big ball over the top, though, and he finds Rothman, his fellow debutant. And it goes to Saeed on the right. Good hold-up play, that. Cuts it inside to Lonvik. Turning creator this time. Right side of the box to Saeed. Chips up to Beck. Just over hit. Oh, he's going to win it back, is he? No. Franson clears it away downfield, but they're clinging on here. It feels a matter of time as Carlson comes forward again to Gronin, up towards Lonvik, who loses out in the air, and Yembi on the right side of the box, to Lonvik, been involved in absolutely everything, and Yembi again, Lonvik on the byline, chipped up towards Beck, brought down, there's three in the middle, gotta find the cross, Rothman's there, Gray save Johnson, should have been a debut goal for the striker, he just couldn't find the finishing touch, he's been absolutely brilliant, as Lonvik, and as Beck on the left, but the centre forward not got his goal, as Janusa gets the ball on the left-hand side. Corner was headed away easily. But we keep possession with Carlson. Not able to produce anything at the moment, though. And at the hour mark, it's a little bit frustrating and a little nervy. Because it's only one, despite the dominance. And I might have to think about changes soon. We're going to encourage the lads. Try and get them on the front foot again. I don't really want to make too many changes at this point. Let's just go and do it now. Lonvik knackered, Beck knackered, but they're not coming off. People looking frustrated because we've encouraged them, which is a bit weird. We have got no one bar Felix Mikel who can make any difference to this team. And I don't really want to bring him on at the minute, given the position we're in. So I'm actually just going to cancel it. If we play the 90 with the same team, we do it from time to time. And it's not a huge problem, is it? We might bring him on if we get a second. But at the moment, 
It's all about getting to the end. Time wasting subs will be a factor now. 89 minutes gone. It's still 1-0. Yanusa will be replaced by Felix Mikel. We'll make the next one in a minute's time and so on and so forth. Lonvik will be the second man off. Frederick Christensen on for him. Wait for that sub to go through. And then Rothman will come off at the end of his debut for Bowman up front. And in the 92nd minute we should hang on. But a concern that we've only got one goal. Three points on the board though. A really positive start. Let's see what the media made of it. And when we're next going to be back. So to be honest. All the sides that were expected to be up there. Have won today. So it suggests it might be a bit of a two-sided league. But you can't get much more dominant than we were. There was no threat on our goal at any stage. Lonvik and Beck look sensational. And as fitness builds. I'd like to hope they're going to get better and better. We have got nine days off after this. So a chance to build properly. And just ease our way into the season. We've got to focus on the Cups as well because it is money into the club, albeit only a little bit. But that was a really good performance. I worry that the best player perhaps is one of those who's leaving or has pre-agreed to leave. But a good win, two good debutants in goal and up front and three points on the board early in the season. Some good trainers. We are starting to pick up off the pitch as well. But there's a lot of work to do and crucially... We've got to deal with this situation. The finances are an absolute mess. Let's have a look at the schedule though for when Minette's going to be back because we've got a pretty big spell coming up. A couple of tough games throughout August and of course the cup starting off. But the big one is straight after transfer deadline day which is the usual traditional 31st of August European window. But the first game after that is AC Horsens, the joint favourite to win this second tier title. And that even this early on could form part of a title decider for this club. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing that one. I think it's going to be one hell of a game. If you did enjoy this episode, seeing the new players we've got, the tough decisions we've had to make financially in terms of sales, and of course, seeing a very good display, but maybe not the ruthless edge in front of goal, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below and to stay up to date with this one, as well as our Hemel One Club story. Keep your eyes peeled on Sunday for a new video from our top three playlist, which you can find in the eye above, as well as another new niche experiment from FM22. And of course, in the eye above, you can find all the other key links and playlists too. There's plenty more in the description below, but a massive thank you for watching. I'll put the top three playlist above my head now and I'll see you back here in a couple of days time for transfer deadline day, a financial stricken Viborg and a big title decider even early on against AC Horsens, the pre-season favourites. <laughs>